Quinn Ewers might be returning a lot earlier than originally expected. Plus, Michigan has a brand new starting quarterback. All that and more on today's episode of 4th and 10. Four college football stories in just around 10 minutes. Now, let's go for it. Before we get to today's video, make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you're watching this video, odds are that you love college football, and odds are you aren't subscribed to my channel. So make sure to subscribe to one of the best college football communities here on YouTube. I'll be posting college football videos every day during the season, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, make sure to drop a like on this video as well. It helps with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. Maybe Quinn Ewers is going to be back earlier than originally expected. He was injured on Saturday against Alabama and didn't return to the game. On Sunday, it was reported that Ewers will miss at least a month, maybe even longer. Well, Texas coach Steve Sarkeesian thinks that Ewers can return a lot sooner than that. When speaking with the media, he seemed to dispute the account. When asked which quarterback took first team reps at Texas practice on Monday, Sarkeesian declined to share that information. He did say that Quinn Ewers is day to day with the clavicle sprain that he suffered over the weekend. Sarkeesian also said that Hudson Card, Texas's backup quarterback, and starting running back Bijan Robinson are day to day as well. Sark added that none of the injuries are structural. I know you guys are going to want to tell me an exact timetable. You're going to ask me specifically, and I'm going to tell you now. They're day to day. Guys, it's day to day. I really don't know. We're going to have to monitor them every morning to see where they're at. Sarkeesian also told reporters that freshman quarterback Malik Murphy isn't healthy either. Meanwhile, Hudson Card is currently dealing with an ankle injury. When Card was in, redshirt freshman Charles Wright was warming up on the sidelines. Sarkeesian confirmed that it would have been Wright as the next quarterback up if he would have been needed. Personally, I think Steve Sarkeesian is just saying this to keep the quarterback battle in private behind the scenes. I don't think there's any way that Ewers is just day to day. I still think he misses a good chunk of game and is out for at least another month, but that's just my guess. Maybe Ewers somehow made a miraculous recovery and he actually is day to day. With that being said, Texas's quarterback room is all banged up, which isn't ideal for them moving forward. Speaking of quarterbacks, it looks like Michigan has their new starting quarterback moving forward and it's JJ McCarthy. It was Cade McNamara who started the first game, but they rotated in JJ McCarthy for the second game. It looks like he left a bigger impression as the Wolverines are gonna ride with him moving forward. Here's what head coach Jim Harbaugh said following McCarthy's performance this week against Against Hawaii. JJ had a near flawless performance, 11 for 12 and then one was dropped. That's tough to do any day of the week in practice. I thought he had a great game. He's playing really well, we'll start JJ next week. For the game, McCarthy racked up 230 yards of offense and had 3 touchdowns while averaging just under 20 yards per completion. I talked about this during the offseason, but I thought that JJ McCarthy would end up as the starter at some point and finish the season with more starts than Cade McNamara. It's a tough spot to be in for Michigan because McNamara is a solid quarterback who led them to the college football playoff last season. If he was their starter again, he'd probably have them in the exact same situation, but I just don't think Michigan can get much better with him at the helm. If you have McCarthy, he's more of a wild card, but I think he offers a lot more upside, which is something this Michigan team really needs. I like that Michigan decided to go this route early on in the season and see how McCarthy does. I think the talent is definitely there, and I think he could be a really good quarterback. The good thing about this is that if it doesn't work out, you know that you gave it a shot, and you could go back to Cade McNamara. Speaking of a team getting a new starting quarterback, it looks like Notre Dame is going to need one. Starting quarterback Tyler Buckner suffered a high-grade AC joint sprain in his non throwing shoulder in this weekend's loss to Marshall. Freeman told reporters that Buckner is going to undergo surgery on Tuesday and Freeman expects the recovery to take around four months, which would put the quarterback out for the remainder of the season. Here's what Freeman had to say about the injury. We can all do the math and probably put it somewhere, maybe January. So that's where we're at with that. Moving forward, Drew Pine will be our starter, and as I said when we addressed the quarterback competition in fall camp, I had the utmost confidence in both those guys, being able to lead our offense and lead this football team. You hate to see a guy go down with an injury, but maybe it was for the best for the Irish. Buckner completed only 28 of 50 passes for under 400 yards with no touchdowns and two interceptions through the first two games of the season. He looked absolutely awful out there. Meanwhile, you have Drew Pine, who played in four games during his freshman season in 2020 and two 
games in 2021. Freeman noted that he doesn't see the pass game changing much with Pine as the starter. Well, considering how bad it already looked, I sure hope that's not the case or it's going to be a long season for Notre Dame. The last 36 hours has been a reality check for all of us, from the coaches, the head coach to assistant coaches, to our players, doing a deep evaluation of everything we're doing and to really try to figure out what our issues are. I think I said this after the game, it is execution, it's executing, but I think more than that, it's focusing on the entirety of the game. Looking at the remainder of Notre Dame's schedule, it looks like there are a lot more losses on the horizon for them. They still play ranked teams in USC, Clemson, and BYU, not to mention they have a couple of tough opponents in North Carolina and Stanford. It looks like Kentucky is going to be getting a huge piece of their offense back, but they're still going to have to wait a few more weeks. On Monday, Kentucky confirmed that star running back Chris Rodriguez Jr., a preseason first team All-SEC selection, is going to be suspended for two more games but he'll return for when Kentucky plays number 20 Ole Miss on October 1st. Rodriguez was arrested for DUI and careless driving back in May and has been dealing with another unresolved incident, the details of which had not been made public. Rodriguez's return to the Wildcats lineup is going to be huge for the team. As of right now, Kentucky is number 9 in the AP Top 25 poll. This has a chance to be one of the greatest seasons in the history of the program. He's going to sit out for Kentucky's next two games against Youngstown State and Northern Illinois, so it's not really a loss there. This is going to be a massive return for the Wildcats. In addition to being one of the better running backs in the entire country, Kentucky can desperately use him right now. The Wildcats currently rank 13th in the SEC in rushing yards per game, averaging just 60 yards per contest. In the first half against Florida, Kentucky had negative 37 net rushing yards. They finished the game with 70 net yards and averaged less than 2 yards per attempt. If Kentucky is able to add a rushing attack, this could make them even better than they already are. Rodriguez has 2,400 career rushing yards and 27 touchdowns on the ground during his time with Kentucky. He rushed for 1,400 yards last season and averaged 106 rushing yards per game, the second most in the SEC in both categories. He was one of only two players in the conference that averaged more than 100 yards per game on the ground. As of right now, Rodriguez is sixth all-time on Kentucky's list of career rushers and is 1,100 yards behind Benny Snell, who's the number one rusher in program history. So, if Chris Rodriguez is able to finish the season on a strong note, he might end up as the greatest rusher in the history of the program. Well, that wraps it up for today's episode episode of 4th and 10. What are your thoughts on the entire situation going on in Texas? Do you think Quinn Ewers is truly day to day or do you think that's something that Steve Sarkeesian is just saying? What are your thoughts on Michigan committing to JJ McCarthy to be their starting quarterback moving forward? Do you think it's the right move or do you think they should stick with Cade McNamara? Whatever your thoughts are on all the topics I discussed today, let me know in the comment section down below. Before you leave, make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. I'll be posting college football videos every day during the season, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, if you could take a second and drop a like on this video, I would greatly appreciate it as well. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you all in my next video.